day and welcome to our first Sunday in May, the Communion Sunday, and the fourth Sunday after Easter. As we go forth this day in faith, hope, and love, I'm glad you're with me to join in our time of meditation and worship. And I invite you now, as we gather for this moment, to share with me our call to worship for this day. Let us share it together. May my, may my spoken words and unspoken thoughts be pleasing even to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. In your day of trouble, may the Lord be with you. May the God of Jacob keep you from all harm. May he send you aid from his sanctuary in Zion. From Psalm 19. And as we gather this day, we share a word of welcome, a word of well-being, a word for faring well this coming week, a word of peace in body, mind, and spirit. It is the Hebrew word that Jesus spoke at the resurrection when he met the women. Shalom. Shalom. May that shalom this week bring you peace, well-being, welcome, and joy. I invite you now to share with me, shalom, shalom in Christ. In that shalom, the light of God shines for us through Christ. And that light shines in the darkness for us. To light the way. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness can never overcome it. And that light gives us this day well-being and peace and serenity. Amen. I invite you now, as we come together to worship and meditate this day, to share with me our prayer of preparation. Let us pray together. In you, O Lord, I place my trust. Watch over me and keep me close to you. Dear Father, forgive my foolish ways. Lead me on the narrow and straight path. Order my steps as you continue to light the way of truth and love. Draw me nearer to your precious side and humble my spirit in the name of Jesus. Amen.
our scripture lesson this day is for Paul's first letter to the Corinthians chapter 13, beginning in the fourth verse. It is the love chapter. Paul wrote this. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envy or boastful or arrogant or rude. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. And now faith, hope, and love abide. These three, and the greatest of these, is love. May God add blessings to the reading of, his, of this word and bring blessings to those who transform the written and spoken word in their hearts and minds and spirits. This chapter from Paul's writing to the church at Corinth is about love, the love chapter. About what love means, its expectations, its function, and how it relates to our lives. Many of us have learned in the years in schooling, I've also learned this in seminary, that the Greeks, when they wrote about love, had three separate words for love. One was eros, one was philos, one was agape. Now the word agape in Greek appears in this chapter. That's the word that Paul used. Occasionally, Jesus used the word philos and agape. Agape, agape being the prime word, philos being the secondary word. The word eros is not listed or written in the New Testament, or the Bible as I know it. Now, eros means erotic love, desire, passion, lust. It is about personal relationships in the most intimate way. Philos means friendship, a lover of something, philosophy, one who loves knowledge, likes knowledge. It's about attachment and affiliation. We affiliate with somebody, we relate to somebody. And that's probably nature. it's friendship. Agape is the most common word in the New Testament. Agape means profound attachment, deep devotion, a relationship that is truly personal in the sense intimate and devotion. In the New Testament, the word holy and saints is mentioned. They're actually the same word in Greek, hagios. That one, the saints, Paul writes, were to the people of the various churches, like at Corinth. And holy was attached often to objects, the scriptures, certain items in the church, as being holy. It means to be devoted, to take deep and personal care of oneself and of each other. That when you are devoted to someone, you are patient, you are kind, you're not envious, boastful or arrogant or rude, that in that deepest form of love and care is that you believe all things about oneself. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. That's a form of agape, to be devoted and caring, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Agape, belief and trust and hope and expectation in God 
never ends. As Paul says, now faith, that's a belief, hope, an expectation, and love, agape, abide, devotion. These three, but the greatest of these is our devotion to our God and to each other. When someone falls in love with another person and wants to relate to them, it's more than arrows, it's more than philos, it is agape. You want to devote yourself to that individual. Many of us are devoted to our occupations, but to have that devotion is the deepest form of expression of our own beings. For God so agape the world, we're so devoted to humanity that God gave us Jesus to be the bearers of that devotion and that good news. And on this first Sunday in May, as we observe our Lord's Supper together, I invite you to be devoted with heart and mind and spirit for God's presence with you, Christ's peace upon you, and the presence of the Holy Spirit to give you courage to go forward. Those are the reactions to the true form of love, the fullest form of love that gives us the courage and strength and hope. Faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is our devotion to our God and to each other. And as we go on through these times, the last few years of the pandemic, and our violence we're now seeing in this nation, we need devotion. We need to be saints. We need to be holy to ourselves and to each other, to be respectful, considerate, kind, to be in that relationship which reflects the good news of our faith. May God's presence be with you this day. May you have certain desires, needs. May you have friendships affiliation, but may you have deep devotion, care, compassion, hope, and faith. God bless you and God keep you this day, and God be with us as we journey forth in the love of God in Christ for each of us. Amen. As we gather together this Sunday, we observe our Lord's Supper. It was for Jesus his last supper before the crucifixion and resurrection, but for us it's the first supper of our faith. That night in Jerusalem on a Thursday night, he gathered in an upper room in the city to share the Passover meal symbol of God's agape devotion to the Hebrew people and their liberation from bondage and slavery and their journey to a promised land. And that night, Jesus took the two elements of that Passover to share with those gathered, the family, the friends, the apostles. He took bread symbol of the staff of life and broke it and said to those gathered there that night and to us who are gathered here this day this is my body which is given for you take and eat in remembrance of me that the presence of Christ is not outside of us but inside of us the Holy Spirit comes to us give us that breath to share this meal. And also he took a cup in the Hebrew faith, a symbol of God's presence, a source of life, a source of hope, a source of faith, a source of love, God's compassion.
compassion, devotion to us. Jesus that night said, now this cup is the new covenant given for each of you in my blood for the remission of sin. Take and drink you all of it. That is, sharing this cup, our sins are not only forgiven, they are removed with God's love and compassion. And I invite you now to share with me this meal and say these words. The body of Christ given for me and the cup of your covenant shed for me. gather this day for my prayer, the pastoral prayer, I invite you to lift up your own prayers. To lift up a prayer that God's love be with us and within us and that we be devoted to the good news of faith, hope, and love that we can share not only with others but within our own selves with care and compassion. We've been through enough right violence, mass violence, and shootings in this country, to pray for those who are recovering from that violence, who lost loved ones from that violence, to lift up those throughout the world who need a word of care and compassion in their lives, and to lift up for ourselves our own need. Help us know that we are our God's children, we are Christ's friend who is devoted to us and that we can go forward in faith and hope and lift up those who we know and have a need for a word of prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, our God, you who created each of us in your image, you who formed us out of the earth of the ground to make, to make us a living being, a human being, and that who gave us in time, Jesus, you shared the good news with us that God's love, God's devotion is for those, each of us, who have been created in God's image and who have the breath of the Spirit within us to give us life, well-being, help, hope, and peace. We pray your presence with us this day, that we as believers can show our care for others, our devotion for others, as God's devotion has been given to us. We pray this day for all those who have experienced violence in this nation again and again, particularly gun violence, to mourn those who lost or lost, and to pray for healing the families that have gone through these terrible moments. We pray this day for our nation and the political crisis as it goes through right now, that wisdom may prevail, that compassion may overcome self-interest, that the true sense of agape be directed not just to ourselves, but to those in whom we interact. We pray this day for those who need a word of prayer, a word of care, a word of compassion, a word of welcome and well-being. We pray this day for our own needs in body and mind and spirit, that we can be open to faith, hope, and love, and be sharers and examples your love for us, O oh God, in Christ. For the grace of these is your love and our love for you. Hear our prayers this day. For this we ask in Christ's name. Amen.
invite you now to share with me as we come to our close this day our Lord's Prayer, saying these words that Jesus taught us to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I am glad you are with me this first Sunday in May. May you have a wonderful journey this coming month. And God bless you and keep you as you go forth. And I invite you now to share with me our benediction, our closing for this time of worship. Let us share it together. Give me understanding, and I shall keep thy law. Go in peace. Amen. Thank you.